Ben Sherrington got off his ass and made this team better. A team that's 15 and 8 in July. A team that was 10 games back in the division when July started, now six games back. Three games over 500, two back in the wild card race. And the question now this morning is Will the Pirates make the playoffs at 412 928 9370? And I threw that up as a Twitter poll, Norm. Will the Pirates make the playoffs? And early returns, clearly unscientific, but 54% of people saying yes. Will they make the playoffs? Yes. That's just exciting times for us. I'll just say it. I mean, if, they, if they're in a playoff race and we got football, oh, man, we got the Steelers. I mean, I, I, that's maybe why I'm trying to manifest it because it'll be great for us. And that's very selfish. But, uh, yeah, I think that they will. I do. I mean, I, I just, you know, they're figuring out ways to get wins now. And they got better. They didn't get significantly better, but they got better. They didn't need to get significantly better. Um, they're getting guys healthy. I mean, Jared Jones hasn't pitched in a month, huh. and he's on his way back at some point. Don't know when. So, uh, I mean, y- yeah, why Why not? Real quick on him, he threw a bullpen session yesterday, and he threw 38 pitches, and Noah Hiles then asked him what his velocity was like. How was your velocity, Jared Jones? And Jones's response, bleeping, starts with an F, electric. Mm. So as if we didn't have enough reason to get excited about these mm. bucks, the guy who burst onto the scene and was dynamite from day one, whom they haven't had in a month, says his velocity is bleeping electric. And while he's always been a confident guy, he's also been a humble guy. So to hear that, oh boy, does that make me feel good. Yeah. They haven't lost three consecutive games since Skeens has been a pirate. And they're just two games back when they've had all these warts before. It's a really winnable wild card field where I think all three wild card spots are up in the air. I still give them an outside shot to make the division interesting. So you've got four possible avenues to the playoffs. When you start to look at these metrics like run differential, which people hold up and say, what's their Pythagorean record? (laughs) Well, the Pirates are getting very close to being on the positive side of the ledger there. And, oh, by the by, I don't want this to get lost. So Michael A. Taylor is turning more into the guy that they thought he would be when they signed him. And that's a big deal. Somebody who hit 21 homers last year and also adds, as we know, elite defense. He has an OPS over 950 this month. But O'Neill Cruz, from July 2nd through yesterday... Has been MVP like. Yeah. Hitting 303 with a 976 OPS in the month of July. They were able to find a way to win a couple of games without Brian Reynolds, with Rowdy Tellez playing sparingly because of his injury. And now you're going to add two professional bats to this lineup. It's hard for me not to say yes, they'll make the playoffs because. Kevin Young and Greg Brown, I thought, capsulized it, encapsulated it great to begin the broadcast yesterday. They were in that clubhouse. They said it was jumping. Yeah. It was I'm sure. It was fired up. I'm sure. So now you've got this gritty team that can pitch the hell out of it that adds a couple of professionals. But now that knows it has the belief of the front office, I don't think you can sleep on that. Mm-mm. And so I hope I'm not snorting it right into my brain right now. But yeah, man, I think the Pirates can make the playoffs and. I think they will, and that makes me nervous Why? as a Pirates fan. Why? 13-9, Jake Arrieta, Madison Bumgarner, Sid Bream. Like all these things, Like I think being a Pitt fan similar to being a Pirate fan. I think being a West Virginia fan similar to being a Pirate fan. And just everything we know as a Pirate fan is there's disappointment at the end of this thing. And it's hard for me to shake that. But when I look at the roster, when I look at the results – When I look at the pitching staff, when I think about the job that Derek Shelton has done of late, it's hard for me to fight brain v. heart. Brain says, yeah, they should actually be able to do it, but heart says they've always let you down, and it's just kind of a terrifying place to be. Yeah, but they, you know, they have that nothing to lose mentality too, though. Like, they have nothing to lose, and they're, you know, not 
they are being talked about, but they're, they're also being talked about like this. And whenever you have that mentality, I mean, that's the mentality that we obviously had in, you know, going against West Virginia is like, we had nothing to lose. And whenever you're facing a, a, an entity like that, they're always dangerous. And especially if you have basically, you know, the young Tom Brady of major league baseball on your team, like they have, they have Michael A. Taylor. Yeah. Michael A. Taylor, <laughs> uh, you know, Yandy Diaz, potentially uh, uh, Ellie De La Cruz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Those guys. No, I mean, whenever you have, you know, a young player that you could kind of surround and knows that he's the guy, I don't know. It may be different this time. It may be different this time around. They've got that mix of high end talent with Brian Reynolds, O'Neill Cruz, Paul Skeens, Jared Jones, Mitch Keller, and then this relentlessness that I think is so charming. Like, this is a charming baseball team. This is an easy baseball team. To root for. There were times last night I'm pulling out my hair. They do some stupid stuff. So do the Astros. A lot of teams do stupid stuff. This team sticks with it. And they get contributions from everyone. And all of a sudden the manager's hitting the right buttons. I'm starting to buck and believe. Are you? 412-928-9370. Let's go to Bradley and Beaver. Good morning, Bradley. Howdy. How we doing? Good. We're doing great. Yeah, we're awesome. How are you? Well, share the optimism, brother. Let me tell you why. Carrington got us a bat, didn't pay an arm and a leg. Good job. He's going to be with Bob Nutting in their country club, sniffing their own farts about it. All right, good call. <laughs> I mean, well, well, we're bummed out today? Like, wh- why wouldn't you celebrate the fact that they added two professional, two professional hitters, they added a legitimate lefty to their bullpen, They added two guys who are knocking on the door to be big leaguers that are now going to be playing for them at AAA, and they gave up McAdoo, who was the 29th-ranked prospect in the Pirates' system, who is probably shooting up the rankings, but you got to give to get. They didn't give up any high-end starting talent. They've kept their future intact. They've added players with control beyond this year, and they've added to an offense— that desperately was in need of additions. So if Bob Nutting and Ben Charrington are happy about it, they should be. Mm -hmm. This was not the perfect deadline, but it was a very good deadline because the future is intact and you just got way better in the present. Way better. Way better. Jared Triola was going to have to be your everyday second baseman again if you didn't get IKF. You were maybe going to have to play G1 Bay or... Connor Joe or oh, call back up Jack Sawinski. Like, think of what this would look like if they didn't add. Hey, Jack Sawinski would maybe be the option. Connor Joe would be hitting third. Unreal. You got to be happy. I don't want to tell people how to feel, but like I kind of do. You, you, you got to be happy. Well, I mean, you know, you stated this last week and we stated this multiple times. Like it's, it's the showing of the effort of trying and, whether who it doesn't really matter who it was if they were an upgrade even though they're not big time players in major league baseball why why wouldn't you be happy because it shows that they feel that this was needed you know Sherrington had the pulse knows that the window could be right now knows how the fans are feeling knows that you know they're they're very close so that's what he did it took a long time it had us on the edge of our seats yes um, people can be mad about that, about maybe, you know, you know, you know, jumping the gun quicker, but he made moves. Like, how can you not be happy? How can you not be excited to at least see how this pans out? Right. Like, right. Like, like, like I want to see how this ends. Doran, it's bases loaded, two outs. You're down by a run. You want Connor Joe, G1 Bay, or Brian De La Cruz coming to the dish? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. They had Yasmani Grandal as the starting catcher the other day, and Joey Bart was the designated hitter. Right. They're a much better baseball team today. There's a place for those guys. But now they are in the roles that they should be in. Never again, barring injury, will we see Connor Joe as the cleanup guy? That's a very, very good thing. 
And when Nick Gonzalez comes back, if Key Brian Hayes continues to struggle, I could see IKF, yeah. who's a very good defender in his own right, being your third baseman, which then even lengthens your lineup more. And they didn't have to give up much to get these guys. Like, did Pirates fans, I don't want to, like, go overboard here and overreact to one caller, but did Pirates fans just want to see a big-name prospect go out the door just so that they could say, oh, they really, really tried? Right. Because the way I see it is Ben Sherrington and this organization got to have their cake and eat it, too. 